So talk to me, Thine Dog. Everybody's been waiting for you to come on. The, the news today, nobody knows what to make of it. Everybody's got something different to say. The one person I think we could rely on the most was Sean McDermott. And he basically, you know, gave a nothing answer like a lot of coaches are good at because I don't know if he has a whole lot to share right now. What did you make of what McDermott said just based on what you know of the injury? And then beyond that, what's your whole take on what's going on with Josh Allen right now? Yeah, so, I mean, look, the mechanism is a UCL. So that's the Tommy John ligament. So his arm got cocked back. So he sprained the ligament on the inside of his elbow. The ulnar nerve is runs very intimately with the UCL. So if you, you know, if your UCL gets sprained, you probably have like a little trauma to your, your um, ulnar nerve as well. So what does that mean? Well, if he popped it good, like a grade two or more, I mean, a grade three is probably going to need surgery. But if it's a grade two, that'd be similar to what we saw his rookie year. So he he had sprained it when he got hit on the side of the elbow because it kind of whipped him around. Uh, I think he threw the ball one more time. Then he ran off to the sideline, and they did the uh, the milking test. And do you remember that video where he, like, crumbled down when they did yes. the test on the sideline? Yes. Yeah, because it was bad. So he had probably a grade one plus to a grade two sprain, uh, and they had to shut him down for, for four weeks, which is about a month. Um. Now, if you're a baseball player, you throw the ball a little differently. So a small UCL sprain. Now, remember, sprains is like a little tear of the ligament. So there's grade one, two, and three. Three means it's ruptured. You got to repair it. Two is a little iffy. If you get a two with baseball, it's probably going to give you trouble. And a lot of times they, they reconstruct it anyways. A grade one, you can kind of get away with. They do the PRP. I don't know if you remember that uh, the Japanese pitcher for the Yankees. I think it was like Tataka or something. Yeah, uh, he, it was different for him because he was doing the PRP and he came back. He actually never got the surgery. Um, but with football, the mechanics are different. So the UCL isn't uh, put on as much stress. So these guys can play with like m- minor trauma to the ligament. So as you saw, Allen had a pretty decent sprain his rookie year. He only missed a month from it. So go to the game. You know, that's the mechanism. You know, his arm got pulled back, puts a lot of stress at the ligament. Uh Obviously, something was bothering him on the next throw. He kind of threw it in the dirt, short hopped it to, yep. to Diggs. But then he came back and he threw a 70-yard bomb on point to yep. Gabe Davis. So that bodes well. Um, so then I don't know what all the fuss was because, like, press conference, he didn't seem too irritated. Yep. And then some rumbling started. I guess some people kind of tweeted some cryptic stuff. So, so what does that mean? Uh, that means like they know that he's got some injury, but they made it sound like this is going to be like season ending uh, surgical case, which it's, it's not trending that direction. He probably has a minor sprain. Um, at this point, I would assume the team's not too worried. I think he's still in play for the Vikings game. Okay. Like you, I'll put that out there. Um, but you know, when you sprain a ligament, you get some swelling um, and he's probably getting some testing done. So he's probably got to get, he's got to get an MRI because that's what t- takes a look at the soft tissue and they probably got to grade the, the sprain. Um, and he might have some, uh, you know, some issues with the, the ulnar nerve, which would take a different test. It would have to be like a nerve conduction test. Um, but listen, I saw some reports, the Mort report, the Rappaport report, they're saying that it's not, it's not a big deal. So yeah, he's getting additional testing. You know how McDermott is. He's not going to put anything out there until he has to. Right. So they're just waiting to see uh, how bad it is. But I would assume that he's already done physical testing with his trainers. That special test that we saw on the sideline his rookie year probably wasn't that sensitive. Probably didn't hurt him much. But they're like, look, Josh, like you, you probably sprained it. Um, let's get some testing and see how it goes. It's probably a little swollen ice it down, work, make sure he's got full range of motion, give it a little massage and see if he could throw it at the end of the week. If it's a minor sprain, if it's a grade one to grade two, you're looking at four weeks max. This is not going to be a grade three season and injury or right, throw that out. We would already know. You understand? Yes. So best case scenario, he just got a little dinged and he comes back this week. Worst case scenario on my current hypothesis would be a month. He might fall somewhere in between. He might just miss one game. He might miss two, but I don't even think he would miss two here. Just That's just the feeling I'm getting. Um, but at the end of the day, he's going to be fine. But you might see him in a brace, okay, for a couple weeks. So we saw him come back with a brace when he came back his rookie year. Could it affect him a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, it's a game of inches. So if you're trying to, like, thread the needle, 
you know, put stuff in tight windows, the game is tied in its third and 14, it could affect them. But if you have a comfortable lead, you know, um, the other little inches of the game are going our way. You're not, it's not going to be as exposed. Does that make sense? It does. So yeah. let's, let's talk about longevity. Then a lot of people are saying, even if it's something that isn't as much of a concern as maybe you are kind of alluding to here, where it's not going yeah. to be season ending, um, but it could potentially be an issue nonetheless. Let's talk longevity. People are saying, you know, I'd rather J.A. sit out for X amount of time than lose him in the long term or potentially, you know, beyond even this season as far as down the road, this being something that continuously bothers him. Is this something you look at here that he puts at risk for himself going back in early? Um, or would he just simply, would, would we know whether or not he should or should or not be playing? Is it something that you can risk or is it something that it's just flat out you're not going in or, you know, you're good to go? Yeah, um, I'd say the, the nerve is less predictable than the, the UCL. If it's a minor UCL and he could possibly play this week, it's just a little sore. It's, it's like a, a minimal grade one. I think you're fine. If you put a brace on him for two weeks, it is what it is. He's probably better off. Josh Allen at 85% is probably much better than Case Keenum at 100%. So that gives you the best odds to win. Now, listen, if he gets in a position where he's running, falls on an extra outstretched arm, you know, he throws one real hard, you know, you'd, just, you'd have to assume they wouldn't put him in if he can't throw it hard. Do you understand? Yes. Like if it hurt him to, to, to play catch in, in practice, he's not going to play. If it feels 100% throwing, if not like 95%, he can play and the throws aren't going to bother him. Now you might want to run the ball a little more. So he's not throwing the ball 60 times in a game, but I'd be more worried about him kind of getting hit, going down on a run play, jamming his elbow up, someone coming, hitting him from the side. That's kind of where you, why you wear the brace to give him some extra stability. Now, if you have a sprained ligament, you are a little more vulnerable. Now I wouldn't be as worried about the throwing, but like the hitting, like you said. So if you have something that's a little stretched out and he does take a hit, uh, yeah, he's going to be a little more susceptible to either re-aggravating it. So you got to start the healing cycle again, which by the way, for like a grade one, we're looking at anywhere from like two to four weeks to kind of fully heal internally. Um, but that doesn't mean he can't play for those two to four weeks. I'm just making that clear. Yeah. Uh, you, you're following me, right? Sure. This is making sense. Yeah. But if you do, you know, it's like, um, here's an example. It's like RG3. He had like a like a PCL or a, he had like a LCL spring going into that playoff game. Probably should have waited another two to three weeks because his knee was probably a little loose. And then he had the misstep and then he tore his ACL. So that's that's kind of what I worry about. I wouldn't worry about that happening when he's throwing, but I would worry about it if he took a hit to the elbow. Or, you know, he's running the ball and he puts his arm out. Stiff arm, lands on the ground in an outstretched arm. Someone rolls into him. So... So that's that the problem I have thigh doc is that is something that it will inevitably happen the way he plays. So is it, is it, it has to be a concern then, right? That's why they're, I'm sure they're doing the MRI. Yeah. And if it shows that there's like hardly any inflammation there and he's getting a, a no positives on the special testing when they do in person, like physically, then I think he ends up playing. Okay. But if it shows, Hey, you know, we're doing the special test on Josh He's telling us he doesn't have pain, but we just did an MRI and this thing's swollen. It's inflamed and it looks like a, a grade one plus to possibly a grade two sprain. The team's going to shut him down. Okay. So you just wait out the week, wait for more report. Yeah. You know what? I am pretty nervous what's going to happen tomorrow because they're probably going to get the MRI results and then we'll know what they want to do. But uh, if they say, hey, it's still day to day after that, you know, when McDermott comes on tomorrow, I think that bodes double thumbs up. So tomorrow if, you're expecting either to hear a day to day or week to week. So you're expecting to hear either that, which would be positive or you're expecting to hear a definitive. He's going to have to miss time. Is that kind of where you're at? Yeah. Like if you hear week to week, yep. It's a great two sprain. Look for him to be out, you know, almost two games. If okay. they say it's a day to day, he could still be out one game, but he won't be out two. Does that okay. make sense? It does. Um, yeah. All right, let's move on to Groot. Yesterday, he gets banged up, gets walked off the field. Uh, talk to me about what you saw there, what's going on with him, and, and what, what we can expect uh, surrounding his situation. Yeah, I'll be completely honest. I didn't even look at the injury yet. So I spent a lot of time looking at the Allen thing. I was right. at the game yesterday, by the way. So then I had to get up and work. It was pretty busy today. So 
I just got home. I'll take a look at it later. They're calling it high ankle. So, okay. you know, they always say two to six weeks. That's a big thing. Two to four, blah, blah, blah. But uh, you're really looking at him missing three games. So that's how I would see this. So we had Kumaro. He recently had it. He took five weeks to get back, but there was a bye week in there. Yeah. So you'd assume Groot, I don't know. It, I'd say look for him to miss three games. So you're expecting Vikings, time miss from him no matter what. Oh, absolutely. Two okay. games. All right. Yeah. What's in a roundabout way here? Kind of summarize the three guys that we didn't have yesterday that we sure as hell could have used. Let's start with Poyer. What's the deal with, with him? I mean, it's been so topsy curvy. Yeah. The problem is without him out on the field, this defense is just not the same. Really, yeah. really need him back. I mean, there's no other way to put it. So what's the status on Jordan Poyer moving forward here? Yeah, so how I read it, you know, he had the hyperextension in camp. We never actually saw the injury, but it's it sounded and it looked bad because we saw how much pain he was in when he yeah. keeled over walking up the field. So I'd assume he stretched his ligaments out pretty good. They gave him like five weeks before week one, w- well rested. Then he, when was the Packers game? Last that week. That was what? That was the third. Yeah. So he had the brace on for almost two, you know, a month and a half later. Yeah. That was an extra five weeks. That's a, you know, he had the, he was basically bracing for three months. He took the brace off for the Packers game and he got his arm basically, it didn't hyperextend, but it got pulled back again. So I don't know if he's going to need something to either clean up the elbow or have some type of surgery at the end of the year. He's a safety though. And you know, I'm not saying like, Hey, you're worthless, but if it doesn't hurt and he's got good strength and good range of motion, he puts a brace on it and he can play. If yeah, if, the game yesterday was a playoff game. I think he actually plays. Okay. I think he would trend towards coming back this week with a brace on. Let's see how the, the report goes though. Um, like I said, if he's not like in a limited fashion early in the week, uh, you know, they might want to give him another week off, especially because it's his second time with the elbow injury. But again, not a long-term issue. He hasn't had to get surgery. He could actually sprain his Tommy John leg went the way the, uh, the elbow kind of went out to the side. Um, but like I said, he should be back, put a brace on for the rest of the year and, and play through it. The Bills, sucks because I know he's in a contract year. Yeah, I know. That. I feel for him, and especially the way he yeah. was, he's been playing, too. Uh, he was tied for the league in interceptions going into the weekend. And frankly, they the just – yeah. Huh, two games he's not in, That's their only two losses of the year. Uh, speaking of teams – or speaking of a guy that the Bills just don't do well without, Matt Milano. They went to 5-4 yeah. and four yesterday in games where they play without Matt Milano. I mean, he's, in my opinion, and I know it's just based on watching the Bills exclusively. I don't think everybody else looks at Matt Milano maybe the way we do, but a defensive player of the year type player for the Bills within this organization at the least. And yesterday it was uh, it was a big miss. The way the Jets ran the ball, not having Milano in is huge. What can we expect from him moving forward? Because that's just another guy that this Bills defense doesn't have him. It's just not the same. Yeah. Uh, I think it comes back this week. So he he had a strain in his oblique. I don't think it was severe. Like he felt a rip or anything because he played hundred percent of the snaps the week before. I think it's just something he probably twinged during the game. Now, listen, oblique injuries do suck because it's all the twisting. It's going to hurt. And then, you know, you're tackling, you're pulling someone. It's, it's constantly irritating it. Uh, Playoff game. He plays digs the year we had COVID. He sprained his oblique. He came back the week later in the playoffs. So, listen, Milano got back to practice in a limited fashion, but it was at the end of the week, and they just probably thought, listen, they probably thought we could get away with this game and rest these guys up another week. Yeah. Uh, I think it bit them in the ass. So, um, I think they probably had a similar strategy against the the Packers, so it seemed. And I thought going into this one, it's the same way I felt. I saw those guys out, and it didn't bug me. I didn't think it would really matter who was in there. And then, you know, that's where I'm just so lost right now as far as – trying to dissect what we've seen the last two weeks compared to the first six weeks. But yeah. I just think having those guys in that, that is the biggest takeaway from yesterday is just, it's completely yeah. different. Now, just not just their physical presence. I think it has a lot to do with their mental, their sure. mental whereabouts. Yeah. I, I think Milano does a lot for Edmonds. Yep. And I think Poyer does a ton for the secondary. And I think Hamlin's a good enough backup to get by, for Hyde, but when you have both out, it's your total different story. The drop off to Jaquan's not looking good. Plus the whole communication. So, yep. listen, uh, you know, I didn't break down any film. I did play football through college, but I watched a little bit of the game back. So I was at the game, so I just wanted to watch it on that that like condensed game thing. And the touchdown right before half. Go back and watch it. 
Edmonds is like outside the tackle box. And it seemed like two guys were on the tight end Edmonds and whatever corner. I think that was Elam out there. And in the middle of the field was Hamlin looked like he was playing middle linebacker and like a nickel scheme with like a single linebacker. It did not look good. They ran it right up the middle. They got body on body. You know, it's five, five guys blocking for D lineman and the guy just slipped in. What was Hamlin going to do? Nothing. So, I mean, his biggest standout to me yesterday, he got outmanned on that interception, that tip ball that would have really flipped the game. They wound up getting that first down on the fake punt. I, there was just so many things from yesterday. Yeah. With all of this said, Doc, give me some good news. I was hearing rumblings that maybe we would see Tredavious White yesterday. We didn't, but he's activated. Yeah. We see him this week, right? Uh, yeah. I don't see why not. Um, again, I think the team internally had a have had a plan for him. So I don't think they're going to go week to week like, hey, let's see how Trey is. You know what I mean? Oh, he looks a little better. Let's see how he is on practice on Friday. They know when they're going to play him, and he knows when he's going to play. He's had three full weeks of practice at this point because he didn't because he came back. Like when did he come back again? I feel like he only he's only, he only had he came back late because the the day they could have activated him, they didn't. They waited an extra week off the pup list. Yeah, then they had twenty one the days. They activated him. Yeah, Before, obviously they he didn't. But, but was one of the high. weeks was a bi, one of the weeks was a bye week. They activated right. him right before the bye. So that would have been two so weeks. He missed a practice week out of that. Yes. Yeah, so then it so was a 21 ended. day. Yep. Then the Packers game obviously didn't play, didn't play in the yeah. Jets game. So I think my whole thought process has been the way they've been approaching it. It seemed like this coming up game was going to be the one. You yeah. have to think that that's, that's going to wind up being the case. I mean, last week could have been the game because they activated him off the 53, but I, I, I honestly think they just have a plan for him in place and they know when he's coming back. He might not even come back this week. Who knows? And they might be pushing it back as they're doing better. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. hey, we, we can get by another week, get by another week. <laughs> Guys, listen, the, the he looks fine and he probably is fine, but things still happen. Guys really aren't there for like a year and a half. It doesn't matter. If he yeah. comes back today, if he comes back three weeks from now, his body just needs 18 months. He'll, he'll get better as he plays more because he's going to get more game underneath him. But little things can happen. Menisco, look at the guys from the Ravens, okay? You had Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins. Both had ACLs. And then you had Peters. Peters took 11 and a half months to come back. They brought back Dobbins and they brought back Gus Edwards. Dobbins just had to get a meniscal surgery, probably because his knees wasn't all the way there. And then Gus Edwards tore his hamstring because maybe they took a hamstring graft. Usually they don't. They take a patella, but – Stuff happens if you come back early. So I think the team knows that, and they're just being as conservative as possible. 